Today we're going to be looking at Amiga emulation on a Linux machine. The distribution that I've selected today is Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu, but FSUAE, which is the program we're going to be looking at today, is available on pretty much all of the distros available in the Linux world. How are we going to install it? Well, Linux Mint has a lovely, useful software manager, and what we're going to do is we're going to search for FS dash uae and then we've got a couple of options now we've got flat hub flat hub version is co uh, supported by somebody else but i believe that the main developer is okay with this flat hub version now we've got that version flat hub but today i'm just going to go with the straight fs uae version that is available in via linux mint and inherently ubuntu now why would i choose that if we scroll down, it's just really down to the file size. Uh, the file size of this is five megabytes and takes up 14 megabytes. Whereas FlatHub, this is generally what you get with FlatHub and Snaps, is that the size of the packages are much larger. So there we go, look, it's taking up 3.1 gigabytes because it's downloading a heck of a load of other stuff as well as FSUAE. And I just want to keep a nice, lean, small system. So FSUAE, the top one I'm going to choose. So we'll click on install, type in my password, and then we'll wait for that to install. So we've got FSUAE. If I click on launch, all we get is this, an Amiga 500 black screen, and eventually, yeah, no hardware open GL driver available, and yeah nothing on the screen so that doesn't really look good what, what are we going to do so there's one other package and for some reason this doesn't appear in the software manager and that is the launcher so let's open up a nice friendly web browser firefox and let's just google fs uae go to the main fs uae website and then what we're going to be looking for is downloads page on the right hand side we're looking for ubuntu because that's what my distribution is based on but obviously choose the version of, of linux that you've got then um, linux mint 21 which i'm using at the moment is based on ubuntu 22.04 so i'm going to be looking at these commands here so each line basically what we're going to do is highlight it then paste it into a command line this one needs our password there we go and then we just copy each line triple click click in lets you uh, select a whole line as well so this is fairly quick so with that done we then do a sudo at update so we're updating the packages and then if you see this last command, we'll do a sudo at install. So FSUA, which we kind of installed already. There's the FSUA launcher that we want and also Arcade as well. So we'll say yes to that and wait, wait for all these programs to download. If we go to our menu. If we look under administration for some reason, not under games. But under administration, we've got the FSUA launcher. We click on that. There we go. This is the main FSUAE program. Now, just to make things a little bit nicer, I've just changed my theme to a lighter theme. Uh, FSUAE seems to be nicer on the light themes rather than the dark. And we'll see down here at the bottom, it says uh, using Kickstart ROM replacement. Uh, click to import kickstart roms so in amiga emulation we need kickstart roms they're part of the operating system and unfortunately they're not free uh, we have to get them from amiga forever pack which is made by Kalanto, and that's a windows program so this already starts to get a little bit difficult because actually we need a windows machine as well so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the PC, we're going to get Amiga Forever, and I'm going to show you how to copy over and get it all set up ready so that you've got all the files that you need. 
So we're within Windows at the moment and I've got Amiga Forever Plus Pack loaded up here. Let's go to Tools, then go to Build Image. Then what I'm looking for, the template is Amiga Forever DVD. I'm going to output as a directory. Then what I'm going to do is I'll just choose a directory that I want all these files to go to. Uh, you can choose to add the games as well if you want, but as a minimum, what I just want is the Workbench ADFs and I want my Kickstart ROMs. So that's all under the shared and that's selected by default. So we click on build, directory with the same name already exists. Ah, let's call this temp2. There we go. It's made the folder and then what it's going to do is it's going to copy all those files into that directory. After that, what we need to do is we need to make sure that that directory is copied to maybe a memory stick or some way of getting that back into our Linux machine. So there we go, that's all completely copied over. Now let's head back to the Linux machine. So we're back on the Linux machine, we're away from Windows now. And what I've done is I've copied over my temp to folder and in here is all the files that Amiga Forever created for me. So under here is Amiga files and then under shared I've got all of these folders. So I've got my ROMs, these are my kickstart ROMs that I need but also under ADFs I've got all of the versions of Workbench. So what we're going to do, so we're going to click on click to import ROMs. So import so we can import from Amiga Forever uh, CD-ROM. So what we've created is really an Amiga Forever DVD, but we've created it in a directory. But what we can do under this option here, we can click on Browse, go to Documents, go to Temp2, just leave it there so you can see these three folders, click on Choose, and then click on Import. Right, it shows us a load of text, but yeah, the important thing is 38 ROM files were imported. Excellent stuff. And now we can see loads of green ticks on all the different Amiga versions available. So we've imported our kickstarts. Brilliant. Okay, next thing we're going to do is let's just start a config. Uh, we've got a Amiga 1200. Let's by default choose a 3.1 ROM and floppy disks. So let's go file icon there. Let's browse to my documents, to my temp2 folder under Amiga files, shared, ADF. What we're going to do is go and find our workbench disk, select that. And then just to test that the emulation's working, what we're going to now do is yeah we've got our workbench disk click on start get a warning about open gl driver don't worry about that though i think you can hear the disk wear in a way there we go and after some time eventually workbench loads up now if you want this in full screen you just do alt and enter and there we go we're in full screen if you do alt and enter again then it goes back to a window if you want to get out of the uh, workbench environment if you middle mouse click you then get your uh, linux mouse back and there we go so that's that's how to quickly get up and running with amiga uh, emulation within Linux. A little few things that we need to do. Sadly, we still need Windows uh, to help us along with getting the Kickstart ROMs, but I hope that you found this guide useful and check out the rest of my videos because I've got a ton of stuff on Amiga emulation if you've just started out and you want to learn more about the Amiga. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in another video.